Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the webinar. For those of you who have joined us today, welcome to the Meditation Live webinar for Board Exam Strategy Series. I'll be taking your sessions for science. Following this session, we have a session for mathematics. Make sure you guys attend the mathematics session as well. So I hope everyone's doing very well today. And you have prepared a timetable for the next 10 days before your upcoming board examinations. All right, very nice. So what's the agenda of today? There will be a brief recap of what we discussed yesterday, the important topics of each chapter that you need to be thorough with before you enter your final examination hall. Then we will also talk about the question paper pattern as well as the marking scheme. That is uh, the marking strategy of all the topics that are given in your class 10 science. All right. So the question paper design says there will be a total of 27 questions and there will be two sections, A and B. Now, remember, you have to attempt all the questions. So I hope you will be knowing each and every question of the question paper and you will be attempting, attempting them very successfully, right? In section A, there will be two questions for one mark, three questions for two marks, and there will be 10 questions for three marks, six questions for five marks, obviously, a five mark question will have, you know, internal options will be there. Also, in three marks questions, there will be internal options, right? Uh, now, while attempting these questions, as I told you earlier as well, you need to be very particular about the marking of that question. So for a one mark question or a two mark question, don't give the evaluator a half page answer or a one page answer. All right. Uh, section B, no, there will be no choices in section B. Neela. So internal choices in the question paper have only be, will only be provided in three mark questions, five mark questions, and two marks questions. All right. And in the section B, you have six descriptive questions which are based on your practical skills. So your practical science, whatever experiments you have performed in your uh, school laboratories, the underlying principle of each of the experiments, the procedure, as well as the viva voice questions that are there. So you need to be thorough with your practical knowledge as well. All right. <coughs> Sorry. There will be one value based question of three marks. So just put in all the values that you have inherited as an Indian citizen and attempt the question successfully. So how is the course structure and how is the marking scheme for each and every unit that we have in science? So the first unit is basically comprising of chemistry. We have chemical reactions and equations. We have acid, bases, and salts, metals and non-metals, carbon and its compounds. And the last chapter for chemistry that we have is periodic classification of ele elements. So the to in total, these chapters have you know 25 marks. So if you're good in chemistry, you have 25 marks in your pocket. The next is the world of living, which comprises of life processes, control and coordination. How do organisms reproduce and heredity and evolution? So while preparing for biology, please pay more attention to these two chapters. These two chapters are really, really important. How do organisms reproduce and heredity and ev uh, evolution? So these carry in a total of 23 marks. Natural phenomena. The, this unit consists of light, reflection, and refraction properties, the human eye, and the colorful world. It carries 12 marks. Electricity and magnetic effects of current carries another 13 marks. And the last seven marks that we have here is for natural resources. Natural resources meaning the sources of energy, our environment, and the management of natural resources. So in total, we have a question paper of 80 marks that you will be attempting at the on the final day of your examination. 20 marks which are remaining will be based on your internal assessment from your school. Okay, and I hope all of you get the whole 20 marks there. <clears throat> all right, so what are the important topics and some important tips that you need to consider while your preparation for your final exam? In chemistry particularly, we have chemical reactions and equations as the first chapter. So you need to be very much thorough with balancing of chemical equations. So what I would suggest is all those equations that are given in NCRT, write them down on a piece of paper in a notebook. Just write all the equations down. 
be it from the first chapter from the second chapter or the third chapter write all the equations down and try to balance them yourself okay so when you are balancing those equations you will ultimately be remembering those equations equations all right so if any one of you has a doubt that okay we are not i'm not able to remember the chemical equations i'm not able to remember the chemical formula with practice believe me you'll be able to do it oh yes lucid uh as soon as i come to the questions part i am going to take your uh doubt for formation of esters and the hydrogenation process sure sure lucid then you have to be thorough with the types of reactions decomposition displacement and redox reactions in the acid bases and salts reactions are again very important neutralization is important wherein we have a reaction of acid and a base to uh, reacting reacting together to form a salt and water then we have some chemicals from common salt which are baking soda washing soda and bleaching powder okay and you have plaster of paris as well in ncert that is also very important next we have is water of crystallization so please be thorough with these concepts metals and non metals make it a point guys you need to remember the reactivity series okay i will be discussing some important questions with you in just a while and you will see how important the reactivity series will you know see extraction of metals so the processes of extraction of metals as well as the refining of metals it's very very important next is carbon and its compounds somya uh, sorry prakar uh, questions about the lanthanides part uh, see lanthanides and actinides lanthanides so these are f uh, block elements all right so it's very very rare that you will get a question on that from periodic classification you will get very direct questions okay so you needn't worry about the whole periodic table you you it's not in your syllabus carbon and its compounds nomenclature you need to be very much you know uh, practiced practice it as many times as possible remember the functional groups as well as remember the chemical properties the physical properties of ethanol and ethanoic acid right next is you should also remember the cleansing action of soaps and detergents one more thing that's very important is to remember the difference between the soaps and detergents which is used in soft water which is used in hard water everything should be on your tips for periodic classification of elements prakar as i told you mendeleev and modern periodic table is very important the trends are very important the drawbacks the limitations of all the earlier earlier uh, you know attempts at framing a periodic table those are very very important next we come to biology so in biology we have life processes photosynthesis starting from photosynthesis then we have digestion in humans respiration both aerobic anaerobic the differences between the two which gives out a, which generates a large amount of energy which generates a lesser amount of energy you should be thorough with these concepts human heart and double circulation then there is transport in plants control and coordination human brain and its components please remember the diagram as well reflex action okay diagram is important human endocrine crying system again diagram as well as which gland is secreting which hormone and that hormone is has what function in a body that's really important how do organisms reproduce so i have told you these two chapters are really really important modes of asexual reproduction then there is fertilization in plants and the post fertilization changes that takes place in a plant human reproductive system for both males and females is very very important fertilization and embryo development please please remember this concept last is contraception and its significance and methods so <clears throat> a very i mean uh, there can be a conceptual question from this there can be a value based question from this so be prepared to attempt that question heredity and evolution mendel's law of inheritance sex determination in humans acquired and inherited traits the difference between them the examples again very important speciation and its mechanism and evidences of evolution this again is very very important okay it's very important last two chapters that we have for biology are environment in an our environment you need to understand the 10% law of energy transfer that occurs in a particular food chain the concept of biomagnification and eutrophication in lakes then there is ozone layer and its significance its depletion and its effect on the human beings then there is management of natural resources in this you need to understand what is the need for managing the natural resources that we have on earth the importance of forests and their conservation 
the dams so dams are advantages as well as they have their own disadvantages you need to understand both and these points should be on your tips so that if the question comes in exam don't waste your time thinking just note down the answer next is water harvesting methods so pay attention guys today we will be discussing chemistry and biology physics will be discussed in tomorrow's session make sure you attend that session and we will be discussing some important questions of physics tomorrow okay all right so for those of you who are sending me queries or how you will get the top 100 questions please log on to meditation.com slash fb live just go there sign up enter your name enter your email id and we will contact you via email and we will give you the top 100 questions and solutions for your class 10 boards exams so for all three subjects maths science and social studies okay so it's it's not a big task just log in to this url and enter your details okay let's discuss the questions first i'll take the question by lucid the formation of ester so how is an ester formed an ester is formed when we have a reaction between acid and alcohol acid plus alcohol gives you ester so acid let us take ethanoic acid we have ch3 cooh plus alcohol let us take as ethanol ch reacted in the presence of h2so4 dilute h2so4 we get the ester ch3 coo ch2 ch3 plus <clears throat> water so this ester is known as ethyl ethanoate now what is the characteristic of an ester esters are fruity smelling compounds okay these are fruity smelling compounds explain geographical isolation all right vipul i will surely explain geographical isolation so what happens in geographical just understand the meaning of the two words isolation means we are keeping something isolated something alone okay so if i have a species all right and geographical means so we we have set some boundaries let's say i'm right now you know sitting in india so i have a species here a species of dogs let's say i have here so i take out some of those dogs and i take them to uh, usa all right so we have geographically isolated those two uh, the species the organisms from reproducing with one another okay so over a period of time what will happen species let's say i have taken two spe uh, from one species i have two populations population a and i have population b all right so population A, let's say, is in India. Population B, I have, uh, you know, sent it to USA. So what will happen? Population A and B will not be able to reproduce amongst themselves. So as a mat as a uh, as the time progresses, we will have a new species from this, a new species from this. So this is how speciation occurs because of geographical isolation. All right. So I have a few questions for you and. Uh, let us discuss those questions and if you have any queries you can forward it to me and i'll be very happy to discuss those so the first question is to balance the chemical equation i think you will be able to do it right now this is a very important question let's see what is an oxidation reaction the question might seem easy to you oxidation reaction are those in which so oxidation reactions are those in which there is addition of oxygen addition of oxygen or removal of hydrogen right simple two concepts you need to remember addition of oxygen removal of hydrogen right these are this is an oxidation reaction give an example of oxidation reaction there are so many examples given in ncrt you react copper with oxygen you get copper oxide that's an example of oxidation reaction now the important part is the last one is oxidation an exothermic or an endothermic reaction now pay attention all the reactions for oxidation that are given in ncrt they are endothermic for example copper plus oxygen if it's reacting and giving you co2o all right so this is an endothermic reaction because we are having we are heating the solution here all right we are heating the reaction medium here but it's not necessary that uh, all the oxidation reactions will be uh, endothermic some reactions are exothermic also so if the question comes to you write down oxidation can be both exothermic or endothermic all right 
what is hydrogenation fluffy life hydrogenation is addition of hydrogen let us understand very clearly what is hydrogenation so hydrogenation is basically in very simple terms it's addition of hydrogen okay now where will this hydrogen take uh, addition takes place to unsaturated compounds that is unsaturated compounds as in if i have an alkene or an alkyne then there can be addition of hydrogen that can take place simply if i take ch2 let us make it like this c h2 double bond ch2 if i have this so this is simply ethene right if i react it with h2 in the presence of nickel or palladium catalyst these are the catalysts okay they will not take part in the reaction but they will just increase the rate of reaction here <clears throat> so what will we get we will get ethene across the double bond there will be addition of hydrogen that will take place okay this is simple ethene this is an alkane that we have gotten now remember this addition cannot take place for saturated compounds this cannot take place in alkanes this will only take place across a double bond or a triple bond system i hope you understand it all right the next question is again important question let us discuss this one arrange silver copper and magnesium in the increasing order of their reactivity using the following chemical reactions now we just have two chemical reactions nothing else is given to us we need to understand whether silver is reactive whether copper is more reactive or whether magnesium is reactive let's try and do so now this first reaction if you see these are simple displacement reactions these are simple displacement reactions now in displacement reactions you know the underlying principle is a high a higher up uh, sorry a metal with a higher reactivity will be able to displace a metal with a less reactivity yes with a lesser reactivity now we have silver salt solution silver nitrate and in the reaction we see copper metal is able to displace or replace silver from its salt solution forming copper nitrate and silver right so this tells us that ag is less reactive than copper okay next let's come to the next uh, next equation that's given to us copper sulfate plus magnesium gives us magnesium sulfate plus copper right so here we can see magnesium is able to displace copper from its salt solution so we can say copper is less reactive than magnesium so here we have the increasing order now understand again most of you will be able to crack the question okay but maybe you will not read the question carefully and in the question it's asked to us to write down the increasing order okay so never write a decreasing order decreasing order means from highest to lowest increasing would be from lowest to highest okay so see what pattern or what order is asked in the question and then give your answer how are we supposed to revise during the last day of exams okay so dangerous fatwa what you can do is you have 3 days holidays before your holidays as in preparatory leaves before your final science exam on 16th so what you can do is on the first day revise your strong concepts okay all the strong concepts all the concepts of science that you are very much uh, you know thorough with that which, which you have learned and practice very well in your preparatory days practice those so one day for that in the second day revise all the weak concepts the concepts that you feel uh, you're not able to do or you're not able to attempt let's say uh, numericals in physics or talking about biology let's say you're not able to remember some definitions or some examples pay more attention to them for chemistry again pay more attention to the trends in periodic table to the nomenclature of uh, functional groups as well as to the chemical reactions that are there third day what you can do is just solve one or two sample papers and finally draw the diagrams all the diagrams that are there in science your ray diagrams biology diagrams as well as for chemistry you will draw your diagram for electrolysis of water okay no matter how many times you have drawn a diagram draw it again on the last day okay and then when you draw the diagram make sure you check it you get it checked or you check it yourself uh, with the help of ncrt all right 
So that's how you will re revise in your examination. Next is next question that I have here is balancing of chemical equations. I think you can do it. Next is this one. In electrolysis of water, why is the volume of gas collected over one electrode double that of the gas that is collected over the other electrode? So electrolysis of water, what does this mean? Electrolysis is breaking down of water in the presence of electricity or with the medium of electricity, right? So when we pass electricity over water, what happens? So we have water in liquid form here with electrolysis. With electrolysis, what's going to happen? This will give me H2 plus O2. Now, if I balance this chemical equation, we will have two H2O here and we have two hydrogen. These are the gases that are released, right? So both the gases, hydrogen and oxygen, you can see they are released in the ratio of two is to one, right? So the volume of one gas that's collected over an electrode is double that of the other that's collected over the uh, electrode, right? Once again, Write down all the reactions that are given in NCRT. Write them down twice or thrice as long as you remember each one of them, right? You have to remember each and every chemical reaction. And it's very important that you remember all of them, OK? Sandeep, how can you solve previous year paper if the pattern has changed to full book this year? Sandeep, don't worry about it. Don't worry about the pattern. See, previous year question papers are only there to make you understand what sort of questions can be asked to you in board examinations. Now understand there will be no new questions generated, right? New questions from new information. All the information that you have in NCRT, that's going to be the same. So you, before this year, you have attempted your uh, FAs, you have attempted your SA1, everything was there in your school, right? So whatever questions you have done in your school, in your uh, sample papers, in your model test papers, in your quizzes, make sure you do all of them, all right? So don't worry about the pattern. Even if there's a change in pattern, don't worry about it. Same questions will come, same pattern will be there, all right? Which diagram in chemistry is important? Gotham chemistry, in chemistry, the electrolysis of water, the diagram is very, very important, okay? Electrolysis of water is very, very important. And we have Lewis dot structures that are important for you. So you should know how to draw the Lewis dot structures. OK, these are the diagrams in chemistry. Next, we have uh, two test tubes are given to us. Write down the equation for the chemical reaction that takes place in the experiment. OK, so what do we have in the first test tube? Dilute HCl and Na2CO3. How will these two react with each other? We have Na2CO3 <clears throat> or equation kind. No, Reno, all the questions in the carbon chapter, we have questions uh, like nomenclature, the IUPAC nomenclature. Questions can be asked from that. We have uh, the functional groups, the properties of the functional groups, they can be asked. Okay. Then we have, okay, we have equations in ethanol and ethanoic acid. So we have some questions there. Equations, chemical reactions there. Okay, that's there. After this, we also have conceptual questions based on soaps and detergents. So do not neglect the soaps and detergents part. It's very, very favorite of all the examiners. Okay, yeah. Na2CO3 plus HCl. So this is going to form NaCl plus H2O plus CO2, right? So the CO2 that is released this CO2 is passed through lime water, and lime water is nothing but CaOH whole twice. When it reacts with CO2, this is going to give us CaCO3 and water. This CaCO3 will precipitate as white precipitate. Okay, white PPT will be formed, and thus we say CO2 gas or the lime water turns milky on the passage of carbon dioxide gas. Okay. Next question that we have. <clears throat> Hydrochloric acid is added to a small amount of substance in a test tube. Now, we do not know which substance is this. We do not know this, right? What do we have? <coughs> Sorry. A pop sound was observed on bringing a burning matchstick to the mouth of the test tube. Now, as soon as you get this statement, understand that this is hydrogen gas, right? You have no other gas that gives you a pop sound. Chemical storm salt, all right. Sure, yeah. So more, some more amount of the same substance was then burned to ashes. 
These as ashes were then dissolved in water and tested with litmus paper. Litmus paper turns blue. So litmus paper red to blue is done by bases, right? This is done by bases. So what do we have? A metal is there. Um, this might be a metal which will react with the acid to produce hydrogen gas. Also, when it is burnt uh, further, we are having red litmus paper which is turning blue right so metal oxides are basic in character so we can conclude that the um, uh, the substance that was there in the test tube was a metal how to avoid silly mistakes anirudh please practice all the questions at least twice before you uh, go into the final paper also make sure you have attempted at least three to four sample papers right make sure you have done that uh, soaps soaps are sodium and potassium salts of large long chain fatty acids okay sodium and potassium salts of long chain fatty acids and ria of uh, chemicals from salts the chemicals that you need to study from the salt from nacl are your baking soda right how do you prepare baking soda starting from nacl so that equation is very much given in ncrt you can remember that from baking soda, we move on to washing powder or washing soda, right? And after this, we have your bleaching powder. So in bleaching powder also, we start from NACL. Ultimately, we have your plaster of Paris. Okay. So these are the four uh, compounds for whom the preparation as well as the properties you need to be thorough with. Okay. All right. Now we have C. Also, guys, a very important uh, you know point for all of you. There are so many activities that are given in NCRT. Now, what students do do is they tend to ignore those activities. Do not ignore them. All right. You need to remember these activities. See, a question can be asked: Describe an activity to, to demonstrate the reaction of acids with metal carbonates and metal hydrogen carbonates. Right. So you what what how will you write your answer? You will write down the activity, the steps involved, the uh, you know uh, apparatus that is required, the materials that are required for the experiment. You will write down the procedure. You will draw a diagram how you will carry out the process, and ultimately also write chemical reactions. Okay. Also write the chemical reactions that will be undertaken during these uh, this thing process right so we have uh, acids and metal carbonates so metal carbonate you can take it as k2co3 i am reacting it with an acid let's say h2so4 what will this give us so, uh, so uh, we have a salt metal carbonate we have an acid what's it going to give us it's going to give us a salt k2so4 simple displacement reaction plus it's going to give us carbon dioxide plus water okay and you can balance the equation all right <clears throat> All right, next is on adding an element X to caustic soda, caustic soda is NaOH, a salt is produced along with a gas, okay? So we have element X that reacts with caustic soda. A salt is produced, caustic soda is alkaline, right? And uh, a gas is produced. The gas formed is bubbled through soap solution and burns with a pop sound. So as soon as you hear this pop sound, you understand that this is hydrogen gas again. Also, X is used in the process of galvanization. What will be the or uh, what will X produce with HCl? So, first we need to understand what is X. So, what reacts with alkalis? It's metals, right? Metals react with alkali. So, which metal is used in galvanization? One such metal is zinc, right? So, the answer would be zinc here. And what will zinc produce with HCl? It will produce zinc chloride ZnCl2 plus hydrogen gas. Okay. What's the difference between glycerol and fatty acid? Okay, glycerol is an alcohol. Okay, it's a large chain alcohol. It is, see, glycerol is this. CH2OH, CHOH and CH2OH. This is glycerol. Now, when you see the functional group here is this OH, alcohol functional group. Whereas fatty acid is, you know, large globules of uh, fats right so please understand there is a whole difference in the functional group itself okay 
Lewis dot structure. Okay, Vaishali, I'll explain you the Lewis dot structure from the very beginning. Let's I'll explain to you two Lewis dot structures for CH4 and one we can do it for let's say H2O. All right. Uh, ninety-five percent student, you prepare for exams very well, but during the exam, you okay. All right, Somya, uh, Dheeraj, what you do is please practice sample papers before you attempt your exam. I believe you have not, uh, you know, sit, sat down, and you know, practice the sample papers, solved sample papers. Okay, so make a three-hour timer, set a time alarm for three hours, sit down in a room room alone. Okay, with no disturbances, sit down as you will be giving your final exams. Same way, and write down the whole answers. Okay, write down each and every answer in a neat manner, in a tidy fashion, and underline important points. Everything after you have attempted first paper in three hours, the second paper make sure you attempt in two and a half hours. Okay, so with this, I think you will be, you know, you will have done enough practice that you will be ready for your exam. Now, Lewis dot structures. Vaishali, let us discuss these. So what do we do in Lewis dot structures? Let's say first we need to understand what is the central metal atom. So cent central atom, sorry. Central atom here would be carbon, right? Now what's the electronic configuration of carbon? Carbon has atomic number of six, right? Atomic number is six. So electronic configuration can be written as two comma four. So the valence electrons that we have is four for carbon, right? So here we have carbon. Let us make them. Let us make these electrons, the valence electrons, with dots. All right. Now hydrogen. Hydrogen has atomic number. Hydrogen has atomic number one. So let us make the electron for hydrogen with a cross. Here. Now, how will they coordinate with each other? Now, understand that there will be sharing of electron. There is a covalent bond that's get, uh, getting formed. How will it get formed? So let me use another pen for you so that you understand very cl clearly. See, so this is how we will have duplet of hydrogen getting formed, right? This will be the duplet of hydrogen. And duplet means in the outermost shell now, basically hydrogen has two electrons, right? And we will have a an octet for carbon, right? We will have octet for carbon atom. So these are the eight electrons for carbon now, right? In case of, all right, very nice. How to develop self-confidence about exams? Self-confidence, Dheeraj, please understand, it's not necessary only for exams. Self-confidence is important for your whole life in anything that you do even if you're walking from let's say your home to your school you need to be confident enough that you yes you can do it if you're riding a bicycle yes i can ride a bicycle okay i will do it all right so for exams also it's the same thing you have practiced your questions you have studied hard for the entire year nobody can stop you from getting good marks right so just be confident when you go into the examination hall be it for science be it for hindi english social studies any subject, just be confident. How will you identify the place of an element in periodic table? All right. So place of an element in a periodic table, Chandna, you have to understand by, you know, if you have the this thing, your uh, atomic number, you need to know the atomic number of the element first. Now, when we have periods, okay, periods are horizontal rows that are there in the periodic table. So in the first period, we have two elements. In the next, we have eight. In the next, we have eight, then 18, 18, and 32. Okay, so from that, you will be able to understand how you will locate the uh, element in the periodic table. Whenever you sit to solve a paper, you get disturbed or distracted and leave the paper. Okay, see, uh, it's very necessary that you do not get distracted. Imagine you are sitting in your uh, school. Okay, so while giving a paper in a school, in your school, you do not get distracted, right? Because it's your life there. You need to score good marks so that, yes, you can show it to everyone. You can feel proud of yourself. Your parents will feel proud of you. All right. And you will get the subjects that you want in class 11th, in class 12th, and a career of your choice. All right. So do not get distracted. You have put in a lot of efforts. You have gone to school for 10 years now, right? 
So all your efforts will reflect in your class 10th board examination results. So make sure you do not get distracted. Just pay attention. Pay attention on your question paper only. Do not listen to what your uh, friend is saying or what the teacher is saying. Just pay attention to your paper. I hope it's understandable to you now, Gungun. How to manage time between exam holidays? I have uh, okay. I told you, Rashmi. Focus on uh, the top, the strong concepts on the first day. Then your weaker concepts on the second day. Then on the third day, you should do your diagrams. This along with a sample paper. All right, a sample paper here, and diagrams and revision. That is it. And as the clock strikes seven or eight in the evening, leave your books. Just go out and play, sit with your parents, watch some television, take a proper sleep, take proper dinner, healthy diet. Okay, have proper sleep, wake up in the morning, get fresh, and go to the exam. All right, Rashmi. Okay, see, look at this one. This is a. Uh, you know, it can be from your practical chemistry or it can be from acid bases and salts. What is the color of solution B, C, D? So adding phenolphthalein in basic medium turns it pink. All right. So this will turn pink in acidic medium. It is colorless. And in basic medium, again, it will turn pink. All right. Now from metals and non-metals, we have how are cracks in railway lines joint? So these are joined uh, with the process, which is known as thermite process, right? From thermite process. So we have Fe2O3 plus aluminum giving you Al2O3 plus Fe, right? This Fe comes in molten form so that this Fe is you know, put into the railway crack. And when it solidifies, the railway cracks get joined. Now, this is a good exothermic reaction. All right, because of which the Fe is in molten state and not in solid state. You have been told by people 10 grades are not important as 11th and 12th. See, Jyot, uh, Jyot Sandilya. See, 10th grade is important. So, as you know, it's not the end of life. I won't, I won't say if you do not score well in 10th, then you will not be able to do anything in life. It's nothing like that. But on the other hand, it's very, very important. So it's your first impression because this is the first national level examination that you are appearing, right? So when you go for uh, go for you know your college interviews or your job interviews, it will be very important because it will show that, let's say you get a 10 CGPA, all right? So it will show that you were dedicated enough to your studies from the beginning of your life, right? So from the beginning of time, you were very much serious, very much into studies, and it's going to have a good impact, okay? All right. Now, from carbon and its compounds again. So these are some important questions. You can scroll through the questions. All right. Uh, I would want to discuss this question with you. Uh, uh, 25th question. Compound W is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. That means it can be an alkane or an alkene. This compound reacts with water to form a compound X, which is used in cough syrups. So with water, so let's say this is ethene. OK, W will be ethene. It will react with water to produce ethanol. And it is used in cough syrups. Ethanol will be treated with acidified K2Cr2O7 or potassium dichromate, which is a good, strong oxidizing agent. This will give us acetic acid or ethanoic acid. And it's also shown because it turns blue litmus paper red. And acids have the property of doing so. OK, so X and Y, so ethanol and ethanoic acid will react together to give you uh, it, uh, ethyl ethanoate, all right, the ester. So it, you can understand it that way. Tips for better science paper presentation. Okay, very nice, Ashna. Science paper presentation, first of all, answer your questions in series, okay? Do not jumble up your answers. So let's say you are answering one, two, three. Do not move to the sixth question and then come back to the fourth question. So one, two, three, four, go into a series. Then answer your question paper. Write down all the answers with a blue ball pen or blue gel pen, whatever you feel comfortable with. Make sure you highlight important points, important terminologies in your answers. All right. And you draw the diagrams with pencil. OK, nothing else with a pencil and label the diagrams properly. 12 marks in section B. How are we supposed to study lab manual? A uh, dangerous fatwa. Study lab manual means you have done your experiment in your schools, right? 
you have done all the experiments in the school you know which apparatus is required you know what the procedure is you just need to know the principle behind each experiment that you have done for example in biology if i say how is uh, to show carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis so you have done that experiment right so you know the underlying principle because co2 is necessary then question can be why do we use potassium hydroxide there because it takes it absorbs all the co2 carbon dioxide that is there okay and the viva was questions that are given in your lab manual those are very very important okay from periodic classification you need to understand the trends the in the periods and the groups so if i say for for uh, atomic size how does it vary down a group yes it vary, it increases down the group and it decreases from left to right in a period okay metallic character it decreases from uh, left to right in a period while metallic character increases down the group it becomes easy and easier for an atom to lose an electron as we move down the group all right now we come to biology so this is where biology will start in biology the first question says earth day was celebrated in amit's school where a talk on global warming was organized all the students were encouraged to plant more and more trees in the neighborhood an event was also organized by the school in each in which each student planted a tree so why were the students encouraged to uh, you know plant for tree plantation because trees will perform photosynthesis right the green leaves in the trees will perform photosynthesis now that photosynthesis will take up co2 okay it will utilize carbon dioxide and give us oxygen all right that's the whole process of photosynthesis now there was a talk on global warming why is global warming there it is due to the increase in concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere right so if that increase carbon dioxide we can limit it down we are in, uh, introducing some sinks for the carbon dioxide which can be taken up by the trees okay what are some other measures to reduce global warming limit your use of fossil fuels okay uh, use cleaner fuels in your car engines in your or uh, you can use public transport right <clears throat> sorry how do plants excrete the gas that is utilized during respiration in the human body so it's the uh, gas that's utilized is oxy okay uh, what should be what should be the routine before one day of exam please answer okay see uh, your routine before one day of examination that day is very very important for you it's very crucial for you and it's very important that you utilize your time very intelligently all right so how do you do it make sure you draw all for particularly for science if i speak draw all the diagrams okay practice all the diagrams okay go through your notes the last moment minute notes you must have prepared and in the evening make sure you have proper rest you relax your body have full confidence be relaxed don't be nervous i want all of you each one of you to be confident okay whoever is at all of you who are attending my session i want all of you to be confident there should be not even one shred of mis or you know less confidence or nervousness in you all right don't don't worry about how will i write in the exam you will all do very well don't worry about it all right uh, ayush's grandmother was suffering from malfunctioning of kidneys the doctor advised the use of artificial kidney for his grandmother which was very expensive and unaffordable a top ngo supported the family and provided some financial help what is the uh, name that's given to the artificial kidney it's hemodialysis okay hemodialysis all right why is this procedure required what will happen if it's not done so if this why is this procedure required so basically it's done when the kidneys are not able to perform their natural function all right what's the natural function it's the excretion part right the absorption of your, uh, the sorry the excretion of unwanted substances so if this procedure is not done nitrogenous wastes will get accumulated in the body and ultimately they will lead to coagulation and maybe they will lead to the death of the person okay now ngo the people working in the ngo they are being very supportive and they are displaying good human values by supporting the family all right uh, when you come to control and coordination the first question says some people are advised to reduce the sugar intake in their diet why now what happens this sugar that we have so whatever carbohydrates we intake in our body the glucose uh, so it can gets converted into useful form of energy all right how does it happen it happens due to insulin insulin is a hormone that gets uh, that gets secreted by pancreas okay now what happens in some people 
the level of insulin gets lowered okay so they are advised to reduce their sugar intake now what's that disease known as it's known as diabetes tell important concepts for uh, getting marks in chemistry particularly i can say carbon and its compounds and periodic classification is very very important here then in biology we have heredity evolution and your uh, reproduction chapter very very important also go through the top 100 questions for merit nation that we have given you all right <clears throat> these are very important you have three days yes but five days are there before other exams why Dinesh, don't worry about it three days physics chemistry biology it's enough for you you are well prepared don't worry about it i can see from your comments uh easy heart okay next we have described the uh, response elicited by a zebra when chased by a lion okay so when zebra is chased by a lion what happens he has an uh, you know a stimulus that i have to run lion is a predator for zebra right so he has to run so one is the reflex action. Another is there can be an adrenaline rush as well, right? Adrenal glands may release hormone adrenaline, which is released in, you know, situations of fear or excitement. And it is going to increase the heartbeat. It is in, uh, going to increase the breathing rate on uh, for the zebra. All right. Next, we have uh, a diagram wherein you have to label the picture by replacing the numbers. So one is testis, for example. So it, likewise, you can do it for second, third, and fourth. Emergency hormone is your adrenaline. Which gland coordinates the endocrine system? It is the pituitary gland that does so, right? Which hormone is responsible for regulating blood sugar levels? All of you know it is pancreas. How do organisms reproduce? Okay. A scientist places a planaria in a nutrient medium and cuts it into three small pieces. He keeps it under observation for a few weeks. What observation will he make after the few weeks? Because planaria undergoes regeneration. So he will get new planaria, new organisms from the cut pieces, right? How to get period from atomic number? All right. Let's say, Shivansh, we are looking at uh, atomic number, let's say 14. All right. Now, how do I know? Now, just in your mind, make a picture of the periodic table. In the first period, so let's make a picture of uh, the periodic table. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven we have, right? So I'm not making the all the groups, all the periods, sorry. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So from here we have 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 groups, right? Now I told you in the first period, you have two elements. Okay, so in the first period, two elements are gone. In the next period, we have eight elements, right? Now, these eight elements combined together, we have, uh, you know, taken care of 10 elements. What was the for, uh, atomic number wanted? 14, right? So where will we place it? So let's try to place the elements. So we will place the number one element here, right? Uh, number two element will be placed here. Then we have three, four. Then we have five, six seven eight nine and ten so you can see from here also as i am uh, ending with the second period i have exhausted 10 elements right that's what i told you 2 8 8 18 18 32 right next we have 11 12 13 and 14 so this 14th element or the element with periodic or uh, sorry atomic number 14 will fall in group 14 and period number three all right also from the atomic number very easy. So I've told you to recognize both the group and period. If let's say I have atomic number 14, write down its electronic configuration. Electronic configuration will be 284. Okay. So the number of shells or the number of orbits that you see here, the number of shells that you see here is the period number. Okay. There are three shells here. So the period number is three. Let's say we have 19 as the atomic number, Z equal to 19. So we will have the electronic configuration as 2881. So there are four shells here. So the period number will be four here. Okay, Shivansh. So that's period number for you. Now, guys, in heredity and evolution. Okay, yeah, we were discussing uh, reproduction. Yeah. Next is we have what happens when the ova is not produced. Okay, so all of you know the female reproductive system. Yes, you need to remember the diagrams, guys. Right? Everyone, diagram for the human male reproductive system for fertilization for. Uh, female reproductive system okay so if the so what happens each month one ovary is uh, ovaries release eggs if the eggs is egg is not fertilized by a sperm so that gets shed away from the uterus uterus along with the uterine wall 
all right now uh, then you have name one sexually transmitted disease so this is <clears throat> a conceptual question on uh, sexually transmitted diseases right each caused due to bacterial and viral infection i hope everyone will be able to do these questions very easy straightforward questions heredity and evolution we have genetic how is genetic dif different from natural selection i just explained what genetic drift is okay so make sure you know the answer make so these top 100 questions so go there go on the merit nation site meritnation.com slash fb live sign up there we will mail you a list of top 100 questions and solutions make sure you go through each and every question there and each and every answer you know it by heart so that you can just write it down in your exam okay all right so we next we have evidences of evolution homologous and analogous structure homologous structures will be those which have same basic structure but different functions they perform different functions whereas analogous structures will be those which have a uh, different basic structure but they perform the same functions most of the students will get confused in this concept but please don't get confused remember it very carefully okay what are vestigial organs so vestigial organs are those organs which are present in the in a body of the organism but they are no longer required for example in human beings the nictitating membrane that's present here along with the eye it's not required as well as the vermiform appendix it's not required so these two are the vestigial organs at this point what should be the study plan for science every day or during the preparatory break somia so you still have one week or let's say we still have 10 days exactly for from your uh, you know first exam so i i would suggest keep two or three days for preparation of your first exam all right so from march onwards just prepare for the exam and in these days in the last week of february that's left what you do is give at least two to three days to science and two days to mathematics okay so you need to practice maths as well if you are thorough with all the concepts theeraj as i am you know understanding with your comments you are thorough with most of the concepts just today i mean tonight or tomorrow revise all those concepts and then sit down to attempt the sample papers okay so when you see these top 100 questions theeraj make sure you uh, you know first attempt the answers yourselves then check the answer solutions provided by merit nation okay the solutions that we have provided you it will give you an idea whether you are prepared enough or you need to revise more okay next is uh in a mono hybrid cross between tall t plants and short t plants so these are homozygous tall t plants and short t plants a scientist obtained only t plants only tall t plants in the f1 generation right so however on selfing the f1 generation p plants he obtained both tall and short plants in the f2 generation so there is law of dominance that is being explained here there is law of independent segregation assortment that is explained here right next is what is the phenotypic ratio of mendelian mendelian dihybrid cross so the phenotypic ratio i believe all of you know it it's 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 right autosomes most of you can get confused in autosomes and sex chromosomes so in total we have 23 pairs of chromosomes okay pairs i'm saying 23 pairs of chromosomes 22 pairs are known as autosomes only one pair is known as the sex chromosome all right lastly we have uh, the questions from our environment so in our environment you need to look at what is global warming okay uh, what is water pollution what is air pollution what are some eco friendly uh, you know methods for waste disposal and what is solid waste management so make sure you know all of them you know what is global warming what is the greenhouse gas effect what is biomagnification what is eutrophication so all these are the con important concepts that you need to remember in our environment from natural resources the management of natural resources make sure you know about the forests okay why are forests known as uh, biodiversity hotspots and uh, who are the stakeholders in a forest you should be very well aware of that okay then we come to the renewable forms of energy the solar energy wind energy and hydroelectricity as well as biogas right so for all of these you need to uh, remember the diagrams for example we have a diagram for solar cooker for the biogas plant you need to remember the diagram guys everyone has to remember the diagrams and make sure you draw neat and well labeled diagrams okay <clears throat> okay let us take one question what are the advantages and dangers of using lpg as a source of energy okay the advantages of lpg lpg the full form is liquefied petroleum gas 
okay so the advantages are it is a clean fuel it has a high calorific value all right it does not leave any residue when it is burnt it is easy to store and it is easy to you know transport from one place to another Where, but this danger is if it, if there is lpg leakage so it may cause fire all right how to fight oxidizing and reducing reactions from complex equations uh see oxidizing remember oxidation and reduction how often should we solve a sample paper so may you need to from see this is the last week you need to attempt at least one or two sample paper per day so see you have so many subjects so one day if you attempt a sample paper for science in the evening attempt a sample paper for social studies next day make it social studies and mathematics third day make it science and uh, mathematics all right so two sample papers one sample paper per subject per day okay so make sure you do it and you have to solve a sample paper in two two and a half hours all right so you can study about that oxidation is addition of oxygen removal of hydrogen okay reduction is addition of hydrogen and removal of oxygen all right so just look for that species in which at the, either there is addition of oxygen or there is removal of hydrogen that will be the oxidized species now two more important concepts here are oxidizing agent and reducing agent okay so the oxidizing agent understand it will itself get reduced okay itself it will get reduced whereas it will oxidize the other species and oxidize the other species all right whereas reducing agent we will have itself it will get oxidized whereas it will reduce the other species okay now guys i hope this webinar was helpful to you and you will be able to manage your time properly in the last few days that are left before your examination start i want to wish you every one of you all the very best and may all the luck be with you when you attempt the examinations you have prepared very well just deliver your best write down all the answers as you are writing down in your school examination do not worry that it's a national examination or how will your result come just give your best just believe in yourself okay just believe in yourself and give your best that's it that's all i need to tell you and just all the best to all of you and uh, next we have our mathematics session all right so don't go anywhere uh, it will begin in just a while and we will be you will be discussing circles and trigonometry there okay so post as many doubts as you have in circles and trigonometry all right very well uh i hope to see you guys tomorrow and prepare a timetable do as many sample papers give your exams confidently guys bye bye take care all the best everyone